Archive. We're live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it's Saturday morning. It's 11 o'clock. I'm still in lockdown, which means that we're all in lockdown, aren't we? Which means that it is your live photography lesson. Um, welcome to my ever so humble abode. Um, filled up the bookshelf behind that way. <laughs> it's not mirrored bookshelf, so it looks a little prettier. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's crack on, shall we? So, Last, uh, first week, week one, we looked at ISO. Now I'm going through basically the exposure triangle with you. So I'm starting with how to exp to get correct exposure before we move on to more kind of complicated, funky stuff, manual shooting manually, black and white, white balance, stuff like that. So week one, ISO. Week two was aperture. Last week we talked about aperture and depth of field. And excuse me, how you can control the amount of detail in the around your main point of focus. So I'm my camera searching, I'm just making sure it's focused. It's <clears throat> so yeah, have a little look. Um, going back, if you've missed anything, you can go back onto my Facebook page at PGP Food Photography and you can see the previous two videos with all the PDFs on there as well. But today we're going to talk about shutter. Now I've said previously, you've got ISO, you've got aperture, and then you've got shutter. So the ISO, just as a reminder, ISO sets the base level, the exposure level for your cameras. It knows how much light is available. The aperture controls the amount of light coming in through the lens, but it also controls the amount of detail in and around your main point of focus. The shutter completes this exposure triangle, this little um, holy trinity, if you like, of exposure. And what it does is it controls the amount of light that's in the camera body that's come through from the lens going into the cavity where the um, uh, where the sensor is. So it's con controlling the amount of light that actually physically hits your sensor. Now it does that at different speeds and we're going to talk about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the camera down because we're going to work in something called shutter priority. Now, shutter priority on your cameras, if you're a Canon user, it's on your function wheel, it's TV, T for Tango, V for Victor. If you're not a Canon user, it's S. <laughs> yeah, fairly straightforward. S is shutter, yeah, shutter priority. TV is time value. So you're setting the value of the time you want the camera to expose for. Makes sense. So TV, and I'm going to show you where it is in your camera. Bear with me, I'm going to step away from my little station move my lovely 5D Mark IV down to my EOS 100D so you can see on top. Because last week there was a bit of feedback saying, oh, I wanted to be able to see what you were doing with the camera, Paul. I couldn't see the camera. Now, there's my lens and my water bottle. That's always good. Let's go to focus on the function dial. There we go. So this is my 100D. Let's just make sure it's focused for you. That's not bad, is it? Right, so... You will see here, I have my function dial set to TV, time value. And what that does is that, turn the camera on, Paul, it helps. That <laughs> allows you to physically, you're in control of the shutter, okay? So in shutter priority, you control the shutter. You've already told the camera what ISO you're at because you've told it, I'm at ISO 100, ISO 200. You're setting it manually, aren't we? We're not using auto. No, Paul, we're all using manual. Um, and you've told it what ISO the camera is set to, so we know how much light is available. You're telling it, I want a shutter speed of X, and the camera will then say, great, I'll set the aperture for you. So this is all done up here. Just make sure I'm still focused. Yeah, so you heard that little, you heard, you hear, you heard even, awful grammar, Paul. Um, and that little bleep that's saying it's auto focused. Great. Time value with your shutter priority, you move that wheel. Now I'm going to try and spin him around for you and see if you can see that screen. Hopefully, you can. Looks focused from here. Job's good. So, I'm going to hold the tripod down, otherwise the camera will go on the deck. So, TV, let's use a pen so I'm not sticking my finger in the frame. TV, and then you've got one tenth of a second. Shutter speeds are expressed as fractions of a second. I hope you can all hear me okay. I'm moving away from the mic, so my apologies. Yeah, so 
Um, shutter speeds are expressed in fractions of seconds, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But just, I want to show you something really quickly. I want to show you, as I move in any of the priority modes, aperture priority, shutter priority, whatever you've chosen as your priority, when you move your thumb wheel, which is the little wheelie thing just behind the shutter button on most cameras, okay, you will see I am changing that shutter speed. It's going from 1 slash 400, this is a fraction, 1 400th of a second, 1 800th of a second, 1 thousandth, yeah? So that is your shutter speed. You then press the shutter button and the camera will tell you what your aperture is going to be. Now it's flashing and there's a reason for that and I'll tell you in a second. We've had a comment pop up. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Hutt, good, uh, good morning. Another fellow professional in the house. So yeah, time value. So that's basically how you control it on your camera and that's how it shows. In your viewfinder it will show exactly the same way. Yeah, you might not have the one slash two five hundred, but you'll have that two five hundred value. Yeah, fairly straightforward, fairly simple. And if anybody spotted the deliberate mistake, you'll see that what I've got my ISO set to. That's cheeky, Paul. There's a reason for that. I don't use this all the time. This is my toy camera. So there we go. So that is a basic kind of hands-on where it is how to make it work. What you'll notice, as I said, is that if you siphon through your shutter speed, it's going to do it even more now because I've dropped my SO. As you change your shutter speed, your aperture value is going to change as well. And that's the aperture balancing the amount of light. So as we said, you're in shutter priority, camera knows what, camera knows what ISO 400, you're telling you want a shutter speed of 1 one hundredth of a second, shutter button halfway down to focus, camera says, okay, I'll give you 4.5. And just to refresh, a second ago I went quite fast. So this is a 100mm macro f2.8, so it will, why does its aperture go 2.8? So 250th, that's fine. 400th, it's flashing at me, and that's... When something flashes at you generally in your camera, it's a problem, yeah? It's saying, hang on, there's something wrong. In this situation, the camera is saying, hang on, hang on, hang on, you want 400th of a second, you're at ISO 400, I can't open my aperture any wider than f2.8, the image is going to be dark, yeah? So in order to rectify that, what do we do? We increase our ISO, because ISO is effectively giving the camera more light. But this is just a quick kind of rundown, and we'll cover this in more detail in a second, because I've got some examples. But the other way, if I go right the way down to two seconds, camera's going, oh, I can't go any narrower, the aperture can't close down any narrower than f32. So two seconds exposure is a lot of time. If the shutter is physically open for two seconds, it's quite bright and sunny today, so the light coming through my, uh, my window is nice and bright, and then you've got two seconds and the camera's going, hang on, hang on, hang on, we've got a problem here. I can't close the aperture down any, uh, any more than f32. So what do we do to fix that? We press our ISO button and we drop the ISO. And now it says, do you know what? I can cope with that. But then if you go slower, it's saying, whoa, 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 it's still going to be too bright. So this is the way you can work around these things. I wanted you to see when something is flashing at you in your viewfinder, it means Houston, we have a problem. Okay? And the camera's flashing, it will generally flash at you with the function that has the issue. So in aperture priority, if the shutter speed is too fast or the, the, uh, the shutter speed is too slow, it'll go bing, 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 I can't do any more than this, you then need to adjust your ISO your aperture. But anyway, that's that. I hope that's made sense. I'm just going to turn him off for a second. I've not heard any pings on my comments, so that says that everyone's cool and again with that. Let's now move back so you can see my lovely ugly mug again. This is where we find out whether the camera's also focused. Oh, look at that! Morning, Mr. Marshall. Morning, Mr. Hutt. Hello, Kitty. She's going to hate that. Right, um, so there we go. So what I'm going to talk to you about now, I've given you like the basics of how to set it up on your camera. 
I said feedback last week was, we can't see what you're doing, so now you can. And I will do that moving forward. So what I'm going to talk about with you guys now, I just want to get to the specific part of my presentation so that I can see it. And so shutter speeds. We've already touched on the fact that shutter speeds are expressed as fractions of seconds. So unlike aperture, this is so logical it's not true. Yeah. We were talking last week, and I even got confused, and I always, I sometimes get confused with it, because, you know, even though I know what I'm doing, I've been doing this 20 years, sometimes the brain still doesn't quite catch up with the what's going on. So, aperture values are backwards. A huge aperture hole gives you a low aperture value, which is not logical. Shutter speeds. If you have a high value in your shutter speed, it's going to be a fast, a fast shutter speed. Yeah, high value, high shutter speed. Low value, low shutter speed. Yeah, it's logical. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> it's great. It's great. I love it. So, shutter speeds are expressed in fractions of seconds, and um, yeah. So, the higher the value. The quicker the shutter's going to open and close, the lower the value, the slower it's going to open and close. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my 100D again, take it off its tripod, because I want to explain something to you which is known as a shutter cycle. Now, as I mentioned previously, bare bones of your camera are as you have your lens. I hope you can see this. We have lens. Light comes through lens into a camera body. Yours? lodged just here and if you get your cameras and you have a look at the back of your camera um, just next to the viewfinder you might be able to see this but there's a little line circle with a line and that shows you where your plane of focus is or actually where your sensor is that's where the sensor is and just in front of that sensor is a little um, rectangular cutout <clears throat> which allows the light to come through but in front of that is your shutter. It's a blind, and it opens and closes. Different types of shutters, but you've generally got a blind shutter which goes like that and like that. Okay. Um, the shutter will open and close at different speeds to allow the light that's come through the lens into the camera body at the sensor, and it does that at different speeds. And when it opens and closes, we call that a cycle. Now, I'm hoping... I'm going to turn camera on because that helps and you don't necessarily need to see this but I'm going to set my shutter speed here on my 100D to let's go 1 to 50 per second which is in the grand scheme of things fairly quick. I'm going to turn the autofocus off because it's not going to focus so I'm hoping you're going to hear this. That shutter So just one click, that's the shutter opening and closing at 250 per second. Fairly quick. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to slow that shutter speed down. So I'm going to slow it down to a quarter of a second. Listen to this. Again. Might not be particularly obvious. I'm going to go down to a second. So we're going to hear the shutter physically open and close. Click, click, hear it, open, close. So that's the shutter cycle. That's the, the shutter physically opening and closing to allow light into the sensor. So that's going to help you show um, help you show motion. It's going to help you freeze motion. Put that 100 deep back. So shutter effects are a byproduct of your shutter cycle. So when the shutter opens and closes at different speeds, you're going to get different visual effects in your image. So, Dan, yeah, let's show you some numbers. So let's have a look at... Now, I had some technical issues here earlier. Let's see if it's going to let me do it now. Share my screen. That, uh, I did this last week, didn't it? Okay, there'll be a presentation up. I won't faff around trying to show you this, but what I will do is I'll talk you through. So, 
what you're going to find is when you siphon, a good thing, if you've got your camera to hand, grab your camera, yeah, and um, turn your camera. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my tripod, because even though my presentation is not wanting to play, what I can do is I can show you, can't I? Wonders of modern technology. Just bring that down. And we look pretty focused. Those of you who know me well will know I don't do video. Um, had to do it as part of my first course, my national diploma. And it wasn't my thing, I wanted stills. But you kind of have to move with the time. So I'll do video for this, but nah, leave that for the experts like Mr. Hutt. So, Tripod, how are you doing? I've just moved the tripod and you fell off. So, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. Working live is great, isn't it? So, here we go. I'm going to siphon up to my siphon, cycle up to my fastest shutter speed. On this camera, on the Canon EOS 100D, it's about five years old. Its fastest shutter speed is four thousandth of a second okay big number really fast and hopefully if I just do this you didn't hear both of those go you just heard that one click yeah so it was so quick you just heard one click not the two then going down to two thousandths of a second the camera is saying hang on there's not enough light there can't open up five hundredth two fiftieth one twenty fifth now, general rule of thumb, a lot of people say once you get to one, one one hundredth of a second, it's a fraction, remember, anything lower, slower than that, uh, slower, lower value, remember, lower number, that puts you in camera shake territory. Yeah. So if you're hand-holding your camera, you're not on a lovely stable tripod like this, and you are at a hundredth of a second, you need to keep in your mind, unless you are, you know, your ex-marksman, you know, you can hold the camera really, really steady, really, really steady, then you're going to need to be aware, you're going to need to prop yourself up against something, you're going to need to maybe put the camera on a tripod if you want, because you are risking getting camera shake. And that's where things look a little bit blurry, kind of one, you know, one side, things, oh, tipped a little bit. So this is a hundredth of a second. Still fairly quick, but not the quickest. 30th of a second. 15th. Eighth, and I'm going to show off now. I can handhold pretty much down to an eighth of a second, depending on what, what length I've got. Um, and then you're going down to quarter of a second, half a second, one second, two seconds for a... Yeah, you get the idea. 15, 15 seconds, 25 seconds, 30 seconds. Majority of your cameras will give you the longest or slowest exposure of 30 seconds. And that is literally a matter of, you hear the shutter open, and over that period of 30 seconds, the camera's going to pick up any movement in here Yeah, that goes on. So I could put my hand in front of the, say, this camera is the, the camera I'm, shoot, I'm videoing on is this camera, if you like. I could put my hand in front of here and do that and put my head in and do all that sort of stuff. And over that 30 seconds, elements of that movement are going to be captured. So just bear in mind, when you're in seconds, rather than fractions of seconds, you are looking at, there we go, very long exposure, busy, busy, busy. And I'd imagine that's going to be really, really, really overexposed. Busy. Camera is busy. Please wait. Anyway, that's to let you know that is how shutter speeds work. Yeah, physical representation, physical demonstrations. Get my phone. You don't need to see my phone on this. Done now, do you? Right. I'm loving this live stuff. It's really cool. It makes me think about what I'm doing for a change. So, shutter speeds. So what we've said is that you've got your fast shutter speed. So anything of one 
one one hundred and twenty fifth of a second or above, so two fifty, five hundred, a thousand, two thousand, um, four thousand, eight thousand. They're fast shutter speeds. That's going to help you freeze movement in your images. That's going to allow less light to the sensor, which means you need a wider aperture, and it's going to help prevent camera shake. Yeah, so one 125th of a second or faster, you're going to freeze motion. You're going to capture that mid-air as someone's running. So it's not very pretty, is it? But you get the idea. The slower shutter speeds, when you go below a 60th of a second, 60th, 30th, 15th, 8th, quarter, half, one second, two seconds, four seconds, yada, 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 all the way down to 30 seconds, any movement in that, fr in that frame during that shutter cycle, that exposure time of, let's say, for example, a second, is going to get captured. Now, I am going to try and show you um, the screen that I'm working Aha! I think you can see my screen. If you can see a bike on a stand, give me a thumbs up in the comments. I think I might have worked out how to use this piece of software. It's only taken me four weeks. So you should be able to see a bike on, the, on a stand. There we go. So, that means that I should now be able to do... Woohoo! I can use my presentation. How good is that? So, here we have... Um, these are physical examples of shutter speed. Please, if you can see this bike on your screen, can you please give me a thumbs up or tell me, just so I'm not showing you images. Oh, I can't see it. What are you talking about, Willis? So, image you should be able to see is a foot is a bike on a stand, training stand. Um, and thank you, Kitty. Excellent. I like to know the technology works. Um, so, this is tripod mounted. Yeah, um, I hijacked my next door neighbour and his, um, thank you Rob, um, you can, we can all see it. I can see it, you can see it, Mr Marshall can see it, right, that's good, I'm happy, let's move on. Um, so, hijacked my next door neighbour, obviously at a safe two and a half metre distance, uh, <laughs> it's got a little training um, stand set up, and this is the bike static, okay? So you've got your back wheel on the trainer, I told, I'm in shutter priority, I've told the camera I want four thousandth of a second. And I cycled through all my ISO values before I did this to work out um, what ISO I'd need to get my maximum shutter speed, which is one four thousandth of a second. And the camera said, great, you give me ISO 2000, you want a four thousandth of a second, I'll give you F2.8. My 7200 F2.8, lovely bit of kit. I've then, Cam's jumped on the bike, and he's actually pedalling now, okay? So you can see the spokes are nice and sharp. Got a bit of mud on his trainers, never mind, but you know, you can see everything is sharp. He is pedalling at a constant speed. This guy cycles every day for miles and miles and miles, and he's, he was able to maintain a constant speed. So the movement of the feet and the wheel are consistent throughout these. I think it took me 90 seconds to take this. Right, next one, we've gone to 2,000th of a second. My ISO is still the same. It's 2000, It's ISO 2000, yeah? It's identical. But the camera's gone, okay, ISO 2000, you want 2,000th of a second. That's going to let more light in. So the camera has then automatically, because you've set priority of the shutter, camera's gone, okay, I need to close the aperture down. Balances out. Yeah, it's a balancing act. I've then gone to a thousandth of a second. Now you're starting to see a tiny bit of movement in those spokes at the back, just a little bit. And he actually put these little white reflectors on. Um, this is a training wheel. He put these white reflectors on from his bike for me. So we had a bit of reference going around. Lovely chap. Thousandth of a second. Still ISO 2000, F5.6. I'm extending, I'm increasing and slowing down the exposure. Yeah, to a thousandth of a second. That's getting slower. I know it sounds like it's not, but it is from the previous shots. So the camera's going, hang on, more light coming in. I need to balance that so it changes the aperture. Five hundredth of a second. Right, we start to lose spokes now. Yeah, if you have a look just uh, kind of top right-hand quadrant, 
of that image was starting to lose us folks at 500th of a second. Still ISO 2000, and we're going to F8. What you will notice if we just go back through these, that background's coming in more because the aperture's increasing, and a side effect of that is um, that you're gonna get more depth of field. You, you stop your aperture down, your aperture gets smaller, high number, you're gonna get more detail. So the point of focus just for reference is no, I don't. You keep saying you can see my cursor and I can't. It's literally just on the point where the red frame of the bike intersects with the tax frame. So just where that, um, just where that little, um, I want to call it a wing nut, but it's not that little handle of the, no, I'm not technical. The little silver bit between the red bit and the blue bit, yeah? That's where the point of focus is. <laughs> technical, Paul. Right, I've now dropped my shutter speed down to 1 250th of a second. Still at ISO 2000, set manually, not changing. Aperture has gone, camera's gone, aperture needs to get smaller. Um, F11, yeah, more detail. And what you're going to start to see here, this is the last point in this series of images where Cam's foot is actually sharp, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So he, at this point, he is moving, I would say his feet are moving at 250th of a second. Now, don't get too caught up in that, but from, from the reference I've got from these images, I reckon he's pedalling a pace of 200, 250th of a second. Now, 1 125th of a second, we're starting to lose those spokes now. If we didn't have those, those little white wraps on the spokes, you wouldn't be able to see the spokes, but you can see they're starting to move. And where they are generally kind of, you know, a thin white wrap around a, um, around a spoke, you can see they're elongating, they're stretching. That's because the shutter opens and it closes 101, 125th of a second later. And these spokes are moving faster than the shutter. So they're move, you're seeing movement. This is the thing, okay? You want to freeze motion you want your shutter to be moving faster than your subject. Yeah? You want to show motion, you want to capture motion, show a bit of blur, show what we've got going on here. You want your shutter speed to be slower than the speed at which your subject is moving. 60 of the second, okay, we pretty much lost the spokes. Um, pretty much lost the spokes here. But, Look at what I've done here, yeah? There's a reason I've put his feet in there. It's a reference, because from here on in, for the next four or five um, images, you're gonna go, okay, nothing's changed, Paul, I can't see Jack. But if we look at Cam's feet on the left, his feet are moving. This is now our point of movement reference, yeah? The chain's not really gonna give us any, ish, any kind of reference, but his feet are. So we're still at 2000, ISO 2000. I've dropped the shutter speed to a 60th of a second. Camera shake territory, boys and girls. Camera shake territory. I'm on a tripod. Not going to have that. Camera's now gone. Yeah, I need to stop this aperture down. There's too much light coming in. So it's giving me F22. Oh, Mr. Hutt, you're a little legend. Um, so I've got comments on the right-hand side. Cheers, Rob, you're a star. Um, now going to a 30th of a second. Now, Cameron's feet. They're going to be our point of reference. They are shifting, aren't they? Yeah. Now, remember that we were saying that he was moving at about 250th of a second. That's what we got from the previous images. I needed to change my ISO at this point, because at this point, I went to a 30th of a second, and the camera's going blink, blink, blink. Nah. Need to sort the aperture out. I can't stop down anymore. You need to take light away. So how do we take light away? We reduce your ISO value. So I've gone from ISO 2000 to ISO 640. So at 640, and I know in the way of stops and the values of ISOs, I know how low I have to go really to kind of achieve what I want to, but it comes to practice. So 30 of a second, camera's gone to F16 because I've given it ISO 640. So there's less, there's less light coming in and it's balanced, yeah? Look at Cam's feet on the left-hand side, 30th of a second. This is going to get cool now we go to a 15th. It's a blur. Yeah? 
you can't, there's no detail in that wheel at all. There's no detail on it. You can't really see whether the, the chain or the, uh, the cable are moving at all. But what you can clearly see is those Nike trainers going a little bit crazy. Yeah. Other brands are available, by the way. So 15th of a second, ISO 640 still, and the camera's gone too much light coming in, F22. So I am setting to, just to recap, the ISO manually and the shutter speed in shutter priority. The camera in shutter priority will then say, hey, I'm gonna change the aperture to make sure this isn't, there is not too much light that's overexposed. We're now going down to an eighth of a second. Now, the light changed here slightly and there was a little bit more light, um, a little bit less light available so I could get to an eighth of a second without anything changing. Happens sometimes, joys of British weather, joys of natural available light, these things change. So we're at eighth of a second, still ISO 640, F22. Look at his feet, he's going like the clapper, isn't he? Now this is kind of cool, this is what, and I've sent these to him and he absolutely loves them, um, quarter of a second I've had to drop my ISO to 125, I believe, uh, excuse me, and still have 22. So when I make the adjustments, camera is compensating with the aperture. Half a second, look at that. It's like Pegasus. Yeah, it's going, 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 going. So half a second. Now my lens has gone to F29 on this, and then ISO 125 still. So it's going really, really, really quick. Back to F20. One second. Look at this. It's like the feet have almost disappeared. One second. ISO 50. I've had to drop my ISO right the way down to reduce the amount of light coming into the camera so it doesn't overexpose. And then we're at two seconds. So one second, two second. One second, two second. Yeah? Fairly straightforward. That's a really good... I think that's a really good visual explanation. You can do this yourselves, guys, yeah? Stick your camera on a tripod, get your bike out, turn it on its saddle and its handlebars. Um, if you have people with you, if, you know, if you've got family with you, isolating all together, get one of the kids to, you know, to give them some exercise, make them turn the chain for you, make them turn the pedal for you, turn the wheel at a constant speed and rock through this. We've got other things in the house that can move. Um, I've got a fan which I used a couple of weeks ago and I did a car crash of a demonstration on a Monday, rambled through it, and I put um, bits of ribbon on this fan and it worked. So you set that on, constant speed, the ribbons are going whoosh, 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 and you change your shutter speeds to capture the motion, you show motion. So it's worth just kind of having a play with. Right, okay Paul, I'm gonna shut the window, bear with me as a truck coming. I live up a little supermarket and the trucks are coming within kind of every couple of hours at the minute. They're quite good. So, you're saying to me, okay, Paul, that's all well and good, but why on earth would I want to photograph the back end of a bike with some guy's feet? <laughs> you're not going to. It's a demonstration, yeah? This is practical use. A um, couple of you who know me will know I have a little bit of thing for birds of prey. A couple of you have actually been to the Hawkins Seventh Trust in Andover with me. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful great grey owl. And so, quite a dark environment, this, in the grand scheme of things, hence why the ISO is at 640. Shutter priority, guys, shutter priority, okay? So I've set, knowing the parameters of my camera, and knowing that my lens would not go any wider than f2.8, I got my shutter speed as fast as it would physically go at a medium ISO, so I didn't lose too much clarity and start to get grainy rubbish stuff going on. Noise, technical term. Um, yeah, so I knew that that would be the fastest my shutter speed could go in order to get me frozen motion. So look at those wings, yeah? You've got the reflection of the green from the grass, um, uh, from the hedge underneath but you've got that beautiful arc that these I mean that's like an eight foot wingspan that's yeah about six eight foot wingspan it's huge but the bird sharp now when you free this is freezing motion yeah when you freeze motion like this what it tends to look like for me is that owl's about to fall out the sky <laughs> you know, you're looking at it think great and it's it's um like the roadrunner 
cartoon. Yeah, so Wile E. Coyote runs off the edge of the cliff and he stands there and all of a sudden, boom, down he goes. That's what this looks like to me. This is how I associate it. This is how I explain it. So what you can do, and I haven't got any of those to show you the bird, unfortunately, but what I can show you is what happens when you start to show a little bit more movement. Those of you who know me will know I'm a food photographer. Uh, PGP food photography might give it away a little bit on the, uh, on the Facebook page. Right. This is something we wouldn't normally do. We would not normally dust a dessert with icing sugar on a white background. But hey, I did it and it worked. So I knew that I wanted... Um, a shutter speed. Now I was using flash generally, at this point this is not flash and when you use flash, if you're using flash you can't use a higher shutter speed than one two hundredth of a second but we'll talk about that another time. I will touch on flash in another um, couple of weeks, three four weeks depending on how long we have to stay indoors for. Um, so yeah, so I kept my shutter speed to two hundredth of a second in case I decided to use flash. I say 50, 200 a second, the camera's gone, you can have f4.5. Now, what you can see here, there are certain parts of this, it looks like snow. Yeah, yeah, certain parts of it, you can see that it's, it's slightly frozen, it's slightly moving, and this is kind of capturing motion, yeah? The owl about to fall into the bush was frozen motion, this is capturing motion. And this is going back to like your, I don't know, your uh, 60th, 30th a second on the bike shot. Now, I will, just to, as a aside, I will post that um, that presentation in the PDF format, or this presentation even in the PDF format, under this video when it all cycles through, and you can see it on Facebook, so you can get this for reference. So that's kind of showing motion, medium. Now, F22. Why was ISO 320? I do not know. You know, low light conditions, knew I was going to do a, a long exposure, 320, weird. I know why, because my aperture was flashing at me, so it was going to be too dark. That's why I went to 320. <laughs> Excuse me. So, Portsmouth, um, South Sea actually, near, near the pyramids if you know it. Yeah, the water is lit. So I've got that motion of 30 seconds of that water going up and down, up and down, and it just looks stunning, doesn't it? You've got the halation, if you look, and I know you can't see. So the halation, if you look at the tops of those water peaks, right hand side, you've got a tree on the far right hand side in the corner, and just to the left of that, just on the horizon, you've got a light, you've got the halation. So the halation is where you get those star points coming off, and it's where you're just on that point of overexposure. The camera sensor cannot cope with the amount of light coming off that. You get those lovely little stars. Wicked, love it. 30 seconds, yeah? You get the available light in the sky. I think there's a little bit of starage going on as well. And you get the reflection and the colour off of the available, the ambient light, so those lovely halogen lights knocking around in the area, and those lovely kind of blue LED halogen lights coming up from the fountains and then we have the classic tra 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 classic yeah teeth in start again classic traffic trails try saying that quickly after three pints um so yeah <laughs> normally i'd say hey go and stand on a motorway bridge with a tripod at night and take pictures try different exposures blah 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 not going to encourage you to do that now. A, stay at home. B, there's going to be no traffic on the roads at this time of night. This was midnight going back a couple of years. There's not going to be any cars to photograph. You're not going to get anything. There's nothing on the motorways in the evening. Well, not much anyway. So, apparently. Yeah, so this is 15 seconds of motion. Now, what you will see in these images, you'll in this image, you'll see the uh, very kind of bottom, just about... I don't know, quarter-ish in, left to right, almost half. Two little blocks of light. And you'll see, if you examine this in closer detail, you'll see light stop and start. Trail start and trail stop. That's depending on where they come into the image or where they come out of the image, at what point the shutter opens and what point the shutter closes. So where you've got a stream of light that has either stopped or started mid-frame, it's going to have started at some point in the image or um, 
sorry, started as you, I can't talk today, so that's more coffee. So <clears throat> when you get to this state, you will find that if, when you get these stops and starts of light, the cars keep going, yeah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna stop, they're gonna keep going on a motorway, travelling an average, <clears throat> average of 70 miles an hour. Um, so where you get these stop starts of light, it's either where the shutter is opened and closed. Right, I'm going to go back now to um, Portsmouth, go back to South Sea. ISO 100, I've dropped it down, I've decided, hey, I think I might put a filter on to be honest with you. So, <clears throat> look at that, yeah, F22, point of focus, it's going to be, see where the Spinnaker Tower is, if you don't know what Spinnaker Tower is, it's that um, ugly looking round sail thing on the right hand side of the... Uh, um, of the frame with the lights on it, the red lights on it. So you go across that area there, work from there left, lovely cloud cover, beautiful colour in the sky. You've got that because you're at 30 seconds. When you've got a, got a long exposure, you will then get... Um, you will then get um, that lovely colour. So it's the available light, so I was just reading a comment, the available light coming through... Um, and you're going to get all those colours coming through. So you're going to get the purples and the blues and the reds and the oranges. Um, I'm going to disagree with you about that one, Adrian. Uh, Mr Marshall weighed in, by all means, as our astro lover. Um, anyway, so that's that. So, yeah, shutter speeds. It's about being creative. It's about knowing what you want to capture, what you don't want to capture. Let's come back to me. I'm feeling... Here we go. Hello. Um, it's what you want to capture. You want to show movement? Show movement. I've given you some tips and tricks here how to show motion, how to capture motion, how to freeze it, how to show the movement, yeah? Um, the water in that last image... If you'd have just been at, I don't know, 15, 10, 15 seconds, you wouldn't have got anywhere near as much of that movement. You wouldn't have got as much of the available light in. So the longer your shutter is open, the more light it's going to allow into your camera body, into the, in, onto the sensor, which will give you gorgeous, you know, low light conditions, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous um, skies. Uh, I know Kitty won't mind me mentioning, but she has this thing about um, sunsets and sunrises and... She, literally, her exposures are kind of like five, ten seconds, and she's getting some really, really beautiful colours. And the longer you leave it, within reason, the longer you're going to get colours. But Kit's all about um, colours and skies and stuff, as well as landscapey stuff. Paul Marshall, I know you probably not going to mind me mentioning this, Paul, but Paul's got a love of astrophotography. He takes some gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. So you guys are all about the longer exposures. For me quicker shutter speeds for me, you know, if I'm um, if I'm shooting food, okay, it's not going to move, but I don't necessarily want camera shake if I'm handheld. I need to be over 125th of a second to make sure that it's absolutely pin sharp. Um, if I want to dust icing sugar or cocoa over something, I need to make sure I've got a shutter speed fast enough to show that. Yes, yeah, so it just doesn't look like a big cloud of white going poof. So yeah, there are some, there's some examples there for you. There's some, you know, I've given you some some kind of ideas of what shutter speeds physically do. Shout out to Cameron next door for letting me photograph his feet and his bike. Cheers, mate. I don't know if you or your mum are on, but thank you anyway. Um, yeah. Hopefully, see, I, I said 40, 45 minutes. We've pretty much done 45 minutes. Um, any questions? Hopefully that's kind of given you a bit of a um, an idea and more of a, those of you who've done shutter speed with me previously, will have done this. It's a slightly rejigged and slightly more information. A lot will depend on the focal length and the sensor type. Are we talking about... Um, yeah, no, that's what I thought, Paul, to be honest with you. Um, anyway, <laughs> not getting into that argument. <laughs> so apart from the discussion about how long you need to get star trials, um, are there any questions relating to what we've talked about? Any questions at all? Um, next week, I think I'm going to look at manual. I'm going to follow my um, my uh, my course strategy. Yes, indeed, Paul. Um, 
you know, follow my course plan, my course strategy for my adult education stuff, which I can't do at the minute. So next week we're going to look at using manual, shooting in manual. So we've used, we've talked about P program, we've used aperture priority, we've used shutter priority. We're going to go manual now. So Saturday, eleven o'clock. See you there. If there's no more questions, because I don't think there are, then I'm going to call this a day. Um, this presentation I've been showing you will be in the comments underneath this video um, within the next half an hour or so. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm not a rock star, mate, not with this haircut and these glasses, but cheers, Rob. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to post that information in there and then it'll be half an hour or so by the time it gets up to Dropbox and in there. Any questions in the meantime, anything you're not quite clear on, drop me a DM. Most of you have got more than one way of contacting me. Drop me a message, you know, email me, uh, paul at paulgregoryphotography.co.uk. I've had fun, I hope you have. And um, yeah, have fun. Stay home, guys, stay safe. Play with your cameras. Uh, bike wheels inspired. Uh, yeah, it does, Paul, doesn't it? It, it I was thinking of something easy. Um, I used to use like a spinning top. And yeah, they just, it's not as fun as a bike wheel. So there we go. Right, as I was saying, stay home, stay safe, enjoy playing with your cameras. This is a time that, you know, we're, um, um, we're going to be doing it. Oh, FYI, FYI, I can talk about it now. Um, May the 5th, day after Star Wars Day, I'm going to be live in the morning on the Facebook page of a photographic retailer on behalf of Canon doing some um, some food photography. So I will share those details when they're out there. But hey, shh, just you, me and the rest of Facebook knows now. But yeah, I will send the information out when I know it. Have fun, guys. Stay safe. Stay home, please. We'll get through this. Um, look after those around you. Lots of love. Take care. And finish. Bye.